hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make a flip top box so if that's something that you would like to see definitely keep watching also if you've not subscribed i would like to encourage you to please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you i love for you to be a part of this family so as you can see guys this box i'm holding i've covered it with some kente fabric however should you choose you can cover yours with any kind of ankara fabric or you can cover yours with craft paper and when you open it up this is what it looks like and this can serve as a jewelry box or it can serve as a gift box depending on what size you decide to make to make your flip top box you need the following items you need a ruler you would also need some glue and I've got two types here I've got the UHU and I've also got top bun so the top bun is water soluble and that's what I tend to use you need your paper tape You'd also need a ribbon and that's basically just to finish up your um, flip top box when you're finished. You need a brush and the brush can be used to apply the glue if you're using a glue like um, top bond. You'd need your craft knife. I've got this one here. You'd also need your craft scissors and then your fabric scissors. Because we're working with fabric, you need a different scissors to cut your fabric. You need your measuring tape if you want. However, you already have a ruler so you don't have to have a measuring tape. You need your pencil but because of this video, I'll be working with a marker. You need your fabrics. I've got some like a bit of my scrap at kente fabric here you need your craft paper i've got this it's called flamingo paper here i'm not sure why but i've got this nice paper here and then you need your straw board so this straw board is really really sturdy i like it and i'm sure that it would last long If you're making a box for a specific object, the first thing to do is to measure the dimensions of the object. So basically you want to measure the length, you want to measure the width, and then you want to go ahead and measure the height. Look at the diagram on the left if you're not sure how to. Be sure to write out the measurements you've taken on a notepad. However, for the purpose of this video, I do not have any dimensions in sight because I'm not using it like for as a gift box. I'm basically just going to use mine to keep my jewelry and I'm only making it because it was requested by Telma. So shout out to you, Telma. So basically, you need to have this formula here. You need to have the height, you need to have the length and you need to have the width. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be working with a height of 2 inches, a length of 6 inches and a width of four inches so you want to use the formula that is at the bottom for the first one you want to have the height plus the length plus the height and then you want to have the height plus the width plus the height and this will give you the formula or the dimensions you require for the straw board so go ahead and insert the dimensions into that formula so that you can know what you need to cut out after inserting mine i have to cut out a straw board that measures 10 inches by 8 inches so go ahead and mark out the dimensions on the straw board and then cut it out using your craft knife and a ruler. At this point, it's important that I mention that cutting out the straw board is slightly um, slightly difficult because it's not like paper, it's extremely thick. So guys, you want to make sure that you hold down to your ruler firmly and then you use your um, craft knife and just cut, you know, using the ruler as a guide. So please just know that it's not as easy as it seems in this video because this video has been fast forwarded. After cutting out the piece, as you can see, I went ahead to label it box, then I turned it over to the other side, which is plain. On the other side, you want to mark out the height on all sides as shown. So basically, starting at this bottom, I'm going to go ahead and mark out the height of 2 inches and rule a line. You also want to do that on all the other sides. So you're going to do that all around. And then at some point, you would have four different lines that are all intersecting on each other. So guys, if your height is 4 inches or 6 inches, you'll be doing the same thing. But of course, you would have a bigger straw board surface to work on. After drawing all the lines, you would have some tiny squares at the corner. Mark out all the tiny squares at the corner with an X, which is what I did. And then you want to go ahead and cut them out. I'm basically going to be using my craft knife again and my ruler as a guide and then cutting out all the squares as shown.
After cutting out all the squares at the corners, this is what your straw board piece should look like. And don't forget guys, it might be bigger than this or smaller than this, depending on the dimensions you chose to use. So gently score on the lines as shown. Scoring refers to the process of making a crease on paper so that it will fold easily. However, you want to be careful not to cut through the paper. And if you notice, I made a mistake when I was in the first one, I cut it too deep and then it fell off later. So basically what you want to do is you want to just cut slightly or score lightly guys so i decided not to edit out the accident so that you, can, you guys can see that accidents happen and that's what happens when you cut too deeply so basically i had to redo the whole process up until where we were so that i could complete the video so yes you want to be careful it's a bit frustrating when that can happen the next thing to do is to use the straw board piece as a template so that you can cut out some craft paper you want to place the straw board piece on the craft paper and then you want to go ahead and mark out the shape with your pencil or your biro and then you want to go ahead and cut out with your craft scissors so you basically are supposed to be cutting out the exact same shape that you have on the straw board on the craft paper Apply some glue to the straw board gently and then cover it up with the craft paper that you cut earlier. So basically you want to apply it to the um, inside basically of the straw board. So that's not the part with the lines. And then you want to just make sure that the glue goes all around and is evenly distributed. If you want to use a brush, go ahead and use a brush or a squeegee or spatula or something. And then afterwards you want to cover that piece with your um, craft paper of course you'll be needing a squeegee guys and if you don't have a squeegee an old card will work just fine After gluing the craft paper to the straw board, go ahead and squeegee it smoothly. So basically all the air bubbles, you want to squeegee it out. You want to make sure that it's laying flat. And if there's any edge that needs a bit of glue, just add some glue to it and then squeegee it down. Fold the box up and then hold the sides in place with some paper tape. After holding the sides together in paper tape, this is what the box would look like. Go ahead and confirm the dimensions of the box so that you have your height of 2 inches if that's what you started with, the length of 6 inches if that's what you started with, and the width of 4 inches. Because those are the dimensions that I started with, that's what I have as my box. Mark out three pieces on the straw board. One piece will be used for the base and should measure one inch more than the box length. So guys, remember the box length is six inches. You want to make sure it's one inch more, which is seven inches, and then half an inch more than the box width. So for instance, for this case, the box width is four inches. You want to make sure that this one is four and a half inches. So that means for the first piece, it will, be, it will measure four and a half by seven inches. For the piece two, Piece two should, should be one inch more than the box length. That means it will be seven inches long and then it will be the exact box height. So in this case, the box height that we kept is two inches. So piece two will measure two inches by seven inches. And then for the last piece, you want to make sure the last piece which will be used for the lead or the flip lead will measure one inch more than the box length and then half an inch more than the box width. So you want to make sure, make sure that it measures seven inches by four and a half inches again, so that you have the three pieces that you've cut out.
all right guys at this point just in case you were wondering why i didn't write um you know waist plus half an inch for piece one and piece three that's because when i did mine i didn't have the half an inch and i just felt that it was just too close to the edge for comfort so i would advise that when you're doing yours you had the half an inch which was which was what i instructed earlier so you're basically going to be adding half an inch to the waist on the first piece and on the um third piece Go ahead and cut out all three pieces and then after cutting out the pieces, this is what the box will look like when you put it together. Arrange the three pieces of straw board on the fabric as you like it to be. So you want to make sure you have piece one with, ha with a quarter of an inch in between piece one and piece two and a quarter of an inch in between piece two and piece three. After arranging it, you want to make sure that you have one inch of fabric at the top of the straw board, one inch of fabric at the bottom, one inch of fabric at the sides and then go ahead and take out the measurement of the fabric that you will need. After measuring what fabric you need, cut out the desired fabric and then confirm that it's enough to cover up the straw board pieces so as you can see i've cut out the fabric at this point and i'm arranging the fabric the straw board pieces on it rather and i'm just confirming that it's enough afterwards go ahead and mark out the position of the straw board pieces on the fabric so that when you add the glue to it it will still stay in position Apply some glue to the reverse side of the straw board pieces and then go ahead and glue the pieces to the fabric in position. So basically, you know those markings we made earlier that will serve as guidelines. You basically want to use them as guidelines and then position the pieces as they should be. So you want to start with piece number one, put them in place. You have one inch at the side, um, one inch at the sides, um, one inch at the top and then one quarter of an inch at the bottom. You put um, piece two and then piece three as shown Measure out the total straw board length and width and then go ahead and cut out the craft paper with the same dimensions. So as you can see the craft paper completely covers the straw board and that's just perfect. So the next thing to do is to cover up the um, straw board with the edges of the fabric. Apply some glue to the edges of the fabric and then fold it over the straw board as shown. So you want to go ahead and do the top and the bottom first and then you want to go ahead and do the sides. Cut out two strips of ribbon that are about 12 inches long. Mark the middle of the base and the middle of the lead and then apply some glue to the ribbon that you cut out earlier and stick it at the middle, making sure it goes in with about two inches. So you basically want to push it in for about two inches from the edge and then you want to stick it to the middle.
Apply some glue to the wrong side of the craft paper cut earlier. Then gently cover up the straw board area with the craft paper. Because I found out mine was slightly too big, I cut out a quarter of an inch at the side and a quarter of an inch at the top. And then I went ahead to apply the glue and cover it up as shown. Smoothing it out and remove all air bubbles with a squeegee as shown. Alright guys, at this point we're nearly finished and the next thing to do is to cover up the box with some kente fabric and stick it to the base when we're finished. To cover up the box with some kente fabric, you need to cut out a strip of fabric that is long enough to go all around and then one and a half inches more than the box height. So in this case where we're working with the height of two inches, you want the strip to be about three and a half inches in height and then in length, you want to basically just measure around the box with your measuring tape and take out the measurement and add an inch and a half to whatever measurement that you've read so basically you need to cut out the strip of fabric that's about 21 and a half inches long and then about three and a half inches wide if you're working with my dimensions afterwards go ahead and apply some glue onto the box and then cover it up with the strip as shown You want to make sure that the box is covered nicely and smoothly with the fabric and then you have the excess of one inch at the top and then half an inch at the base of the box. At the base, snip the edges and then apply some glue to the fabric and then fold it over the base of the box as shown. For the top, you also want to snip the edges of the fabric at the corners and then you want to apply some glue and then fold it over as well. You want to make sure it's done as smoothly as possible and don't forget that if you have any excess glue, you can just wipe it off. After covering the box with some fabric, this is what the box looks like and guys the last thing to do is to basically just stick the box onto the base. So to do that you want to apply some glue to the base of the box and then stick it to the base. You want to make sure that it's in position and you want to make sure you have half an inch to the left, half an inch to the right and half an inch at the front. However like I said I don't have half an inch at the front because I didn't add to the width. So guys if you're not looking to make the mistake that I did you want to make sure that you add you know to the top. It's not necessarily a mistake really but if you want to make sure to have a better looking box just add to the front If you want, you can also apply some glue to the back side of the box as shown. However, with the first box, I didn't do that. But with this box, I decided to do that so I can show you guys kind of like the difference. After gluing the base and the back side of the box, allow the box to sit for about 30 minutes and then put some weight in it just to make sure that it's sturdy and stays intact. 
all right guys so we've come to the very end of this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it was worth your while if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to share don't forget to leave your comments suggestions and um, feedback in the comment section below i love to read from you guys and i always try as much as possible to respond please if you've not subscribed please don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you guys it absolutely helps me out when you guys leave your comments when you guys engage with my videos when you guys like my videos and when you guys share my videos so please don't forget to do that thank you and i'll see you on my next video next week bye